All right, so when it comes to putting your design onto your spoon, you want to use something that will stay there well and is easy to put on, but won't necessarily ruin the wood or be there in the final product. So something like a Sharpie marker. Super easy to get the design onto the wood. However, it bleeds into the wood, and if you're not taking off a lot in that area, or you accidentally draw the wrong thing and it sort of pushes over into your area that you wanted to keep, it's gonna stay there. You have to carve a, a, a more unreasonable area away to get rid of the Sharpie marker. Um, but that's not to say some people don't use it. You can use it if it's the only thing you have. Um, for me, the things that I like to use are soft pencils. So, what I mean by a soft pencil is its number. And here you can see this is a 6B and this is an 8B. B is considered a soft pencil, H is considered a hard pencil. Uh, at school we use HB pencils, two, number two pencils. So what this does is it lets me get a very black line that I can easily see while I'm working and Keeping in mind where the handle is and stuff like that, I can just do a quick glance while I move the piece of wood around. Um, so this one is a graphite pencil. Um, it's a woodless pencil made by the same, no, actually no, it's made by a different company. So uh, this one's made by General, and this one's made by Derwent. Um, both pencils are fine. This one is an 8B, this one's a 6B. I find that this one lays a little bit of a darker line down than this one, even though it's softer or I should say harder, um, but they both work really well. So when it comes to putting the design itself onto the spoon, one, I wanna make sure that I'm looking at my spoon blank, just enough to make sure that I know the proper side to put the spoon face on. If my spoon blank has already started to curve, I want to make sure that I can utilize that. If it's not, or if I took too much off of one side and I don't want that to be a problem, I'm not going to use this side, say, as the, the spoon bowl or whatever. So you want to look down the spoon, make sure that you understand where everything's going to go, how it's all going to line up. If there are flat spots, if there aren't, there's a little ridge down the spoon, and when you get really practiced, you can make that your center line, but sometimes it's gonna be off to one side or another, depending upon how the wood was shaped or just how, how you were carving that day. So in looking at this, I want to have my spoon down on this side and the handle down on this side. I should say the bowl on this side. And that's just because this is a little bit thicker and for the style of spoons that I like to make, Having more over here lets me get a more drastic shape in the spoon bowl. Then when it comes to the other side, they're, they're both pretty good. Um, so I don't need to really flip it over one way or another. So now I'm going to start off by giving myself a midline. And that's, that's roughly in the middle. Um, and that's where the ridge of the piece of wood is, and then I draw all the way down. Next, what I'm going to do is find where I want to have the bowl, how big the, the bowl I want. You can also do a thirds technique. So you can say my bowl is one third of my spoon and the handle is two thirds of my spoon, and you can measure out those lengths on here. Um, that's a completely reasonable way. I was doing that for a while. It makes great looking spoons. So I'm just gonna start off giving myself a spoon bowl. Right now I like larger spoon bowls and short handles. I think those look really cool. So I go around, give myself a rather large bowl. And the, the shape of the bowl is, is relatively personal preference. There's a few things that certain shapes help with that other shapes don't, but 
in, in the general sense of making a spoon, you just want it to be relatively circular, closer to oval. Um, so this one's an oval. Now I'm going to roughly measure out a third. So one, two, about three, right? Yeah. So one, two, two thirds of the way up on the spoon bowl, I'm going to be making a line. And what this line is for is where I'm going to be cutting into to help make the crank of the spoon or where the spoon's going to bend. So this is going to be the deepest part of the spoon bowl. Next, I go into the handle. And now is, it's really personal preference on how big you want your handle designs to be and what you want them to look like. But this midline right here, that's really what's helping you make an even handle and get it to match up with where the spoon bowl is. So I like to make a little relatively long oval here and then I'll come from one side, so this is my right side, and I'll come over to the left side of the spoon. Then I'll take the left side of the handle, come over to the right side of the spoon, and then I'll draw a line in the middle where I can connect those. And that's it's a little, little way of making it so that your neck of the spoon lines up relatively well with everything else that you're doing. Um, so for me, I like a bigger bowl with a shorter handle. You can go all the way to the end. You can make a really long, thin handle as long as the neck is thick enough. Um, then, it's, and then it's fine, really. Um, then you have your ideas on the ends. You can add to yourself a finial or not. Um, and that just depends. Like You can have it in the middle, really simple. You can have it off to the side. And either of those, or any shape really, circles are easier, but you can have them be diamonds. I've seen people make birds. Really, it, it all depends on you. There was one that was a really cool mouse. That was a really cool finial. Uh, very high quality of carving right there. So as it goes through, the only things now that you're focusing on are making sure that the handle's even. When I draw my handles, I basically just draw in and just keep drawing. You can erase, you can carve off, do whatever you want with that to get rid of any excess pencil marks. But for me, the pencil is more so just a guideline. And then once everything is fully fleshed out, I'm using light and picking the spoon up to just sort of see where everything's gonna end up. So here is how to section out and draw on your spoon blank, I guess your spoon design, not your spoon design on your spoon blank. So as a rough recap, you have a bowl, you want it to be an oval, two thirds of the way back is where the deepest section is, and that's where you're gonna draw your line, that's where the bottom of the bowl is gonna be, your handle can be anywhere from two thirds to less or more, depending upon how you want it, the handle shape, is once again more so dependent upon you but you want the neck to be thinner and that is to make it so that you can have a look nice it's more of a visual thing than anything else then you thin out the handle because the handle part where you're holding it you want it to actually be thinner so it lays flat in the hand otherwise it's going to be rolling around which is good for cooking spoons because you're moving those. You want them to be very dexterous. But with these eating spoons, you want them to be flat and lay in the hand so that they're not moving all about. And that is the rough guidelines. Add a finial if you want, don't need one. Um, those are all personal preference. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. <clears throat> if you have any questions, comment below. And if you like these videos and want to see more, follow my channel, and just keep up to date with this. Follow me on Instagram at Glenn P. Art and on Facebook by the same name. Check out my website. And if you guys really like and support me, I'll be able to make more of these videos. Thank you. Have a good one, guys.